Hello everyone, this is John from Western Maine Defensive Tactics here on a beautiful day in early October to talk about a hobby of mine I've had for years, slinging. Slinging is a, is a really fun pastime and it's been around, it's as, literally as old as the hills. It's been around in, in uh, man's weapons repertoire for thousands and thousands of years. Though it's not real common today, though you'll see it in some places where uh, guns in particular, handguns, are hard to get. And it's a really good weapon to, to spend some time mastering because there are not many weapons that are from the ancient world that can hit a man in the head at 100 yards and then be rolled up and stuck in your pocket. It's a, a really great advantage to have. You can carry five or six slings on you with, with no problem whatsoever. They're compact, they're light, the, they're easy to make. Pretty much no real reason to buy one, though there's a bunch of people out there selling slings of, of various designs and, and uh, constructions uh, on the internet and other places. Now, what I'm using here is just a pretty simple sling with a piece of leather for the pouch and braided jute cord for the thongs. The disadvantage of the natural fiber, the jute, is it wears a little faster than, say, a nylon will. The advantages of it are, I like, it's, it's more silent. It doesn't make a uh, high-pitched swishing sound like paracord does. I use paracord slings for years. They work real well, they last for a long time, but they're kind of obnoxious when you're trying to be stealthy. And that's one of the reasons I like the sling is because it is stealthy. Uh, you just have to replace the, the fiber thongs every once in a while. It's no big deal. Accuracy with a sling, well, it requires a lot of practice. And in order to practice, you're gonna need to rig up something like this. This is just a big piece of what we call mill felt here locally. It's mill dryer felt. You can use a large piece of canvas. I don't recommend a plastic tarp. I haven't used one. I, I think uh, some, of your, some of your ammunition is gonna rip right through it real easy. All this does is allow you to have a large aiming point and a backstop that will absorb the energy of your shot and let it drop so you can collect it so you're not always hunting for ammunition. We'll talk about ammunition in a bit. But this is a 12 by 12 piece. Also, you see over there, my plow truck is parked over there. Don't do that. That truck has had a couple of close calls as I experiment with different dis distances and different lengths of sling. Keep things that are uh, breakable or valuable to you, as well as your animals and stuff, people, out of the way of your sling range. Because when you're, f when you're first starting, uh, things can get a bit erratic, especially when you're using various size rocks. And that brings us to ammunition. I'm going to turn the camera over here. Here we go. Now, the most common type of sling ammo you're going to find is going to be a rock from the river. And uh, that's basically what I've done. I went to a place of my, a place that was a favorite place of mine to go fishing, and, and uh, it's happened to have a really good place of, for picking sling rocks, and I picked up a whole bunch. This is about a third of what I picked up. Probably about 40 or 50 pounds of rocks off the river. And they're all generally of a size, though I got some bigger ones and some smaller ones, but they're all, you know, pretty nice slinging stones. And they were free. And I collected a bunch, and I can reuse these, and when I start losing some and run out, I'll just go get a little more. That's a pretty simple way to do it. And uh, you can actually find some very ideal sling stones in the river if you look. Let's say you're not near a river and you don't have that option. Well, you can also buy concrete powder. Ta-da! Don't put any aggregate in it, i.e. I uh, no sand, no gravel, anything like that. And roll yourself little balls like this. This is uh, something I hadn't thought of, but I learned from uh, a website called slinging.org. And I highly recommend, even if you're an old, old sl hand at slinging like I am, that you uh, at least go peruse the website, if not become a member, because you're going to learn some things. That I've been slinging since I was a kid, like I said, and I learned quite a bit from it. It was a, there's a good group of people there. They have a really, uh, really good bunch of ideas and uh, a lot of historical knowledge as well. But these I scoop out with an ice cream scoop, roll in my hands, and put into a, an egg carton to let dry. They're not 100% round, but uh, they're of a fairly consistent size and weight, so your accuracy goes up. If you want the ultimate in accuracy and range with a sling, you probably need to use lead. This is a, just a lead fishing sinker that weighs about four ounces. Uh, the most efficient way to do this would be to mold these yourself. But uh, practice with the river rocks for a little while and get your accuracy down. And uh, you switch to these, a handful of these, you'll find your accuracy, your, your group, if you have a three-foot group or a four-foot group with river rocks, you'll find it's going to shrink to about a foot with these. 
after a little practice because these are very consistent. They fly real well. They're kind of hard to see, so I'm probably going to paint a bunch of these orange so I can find them easier. But these are these are penultimate projectile right here for a sling, and deadly, deadly. If you look at the ancient records, you'll find all sorts of uh, accounts of people getting two-inch wounds and people getting uh, basically having their skulls opened up by sling projectiles. Slings can be very, very deadly in the right hands. But they do require uh, quite a bit of dedicated practice to get really, truly good with. Um, a couple summers ago, I was able to do headshots at 50 yards. I slacked off on my practice and practiced other things. I can't do that right now. But uh, as I said, you can put a sling in your pocket, make, make one up, put it in your pocket, it doesn't weigh anything. And most of the summer, my son and I are running around with slings in our cargo pockets or in our pants pockets, whatever. And whenever we go fishing someplace, there's a good place for, for sling rocks. Usually if the fish aren't biting, we'll start slinging and just fool around that way. It's a nice way to spend some time. And hey, it might, it might turn into a useful survival skill for you at some point too. And what does this have to do with buoy knives? Well, a very compact range weapon, a compact uh, close range weapon. If you learn to use them both and practice the skills, you've got a pretty capable system that you can conceal right on your person no matter what. So, hey, go out there and make some slings and... Uh, I realize this is the fall, but in the spring, that's usually when I get out and do my slinging. Get out there and uh, have some fun next spring. Learn a skill. It's a, it might serve you well. Take care.